it has been a long time since I have filmed a video. We are at the end of the year now. I don't think I've posted in like six months. Yeah, I haven't talked about mental health on the channel in a long time, so I'm gonna start out with this. This year has been wild. It's been a good year overall, but definitely some highs and lows along the way. And I'm only really now taking the time to actually invest in my interests and my hobbies and stuff again, so that's what suffered this year. We're back. I don't know how consistent we're gonna be, but we're gonna try to be consistent. We are going to pull the E36 out of the trailer. I have the coolant system all plumbed up, so all we have to do is bleed that and the car will be ready for the spring. So stay tuned at Horsepower Pizza on all platforms. There she is. She's in the garage once again. Hopefully she leaves under her own power this time. Hey. Uh, feels weird to do this. We haven't done this in a long we time. We haven't done this in a while. Yeah. I don't really know what to do with my hands. Yeah, not neither do I. So we got new next door neighbors. One, they're going to be extremely disappointed to find out that uh, the trailer that sits in my driveway that is a billboard for Barnes Brothers Motorcycles and Off-Road. Yeah, that sits there year round and it faces their property so they get to look at a billboard two i haven't met them yet i hope they're cool would have been real awkward though if their first interaction with us is me and ron trying to uh connect to the trailer and move it that's an issue for another day and i did this on tiktok so if you don't follow on tiktok go see that but we finally got everything all hooked up for the chase bays tucked radiator has a mishimoto slim fit fan i don't think i filmed any of that when i was still filming videos but i wired that myself it it has a relay in it, so it should be okay. Not real sure how this fits with like, I don't know, I gotta trim more of that, I think, because it's not great. First course of action is going to be uh, bleeding the coolant system, and then we're gonna pull the diff out of it, and I guess that'll get welded. And yeah. then it really just needs aligned. Yeah and a new battery and the dual caliper setup which we have absolute piss out of her. we have the calipers we have the brackets and we have the lines for the dual caliper setup i just need a hydro handle i might start making those and selling them so stay tuned for that in the coming months to bleed the system i got this super convenient funnel from harbor freight it's specifically for bleeding coolant systems now it comes with all of these little adapters and uh filler necks and whatever else they all have rubber grommets on them you figure out which one fits your coolant system or your filler neck, your radiator, however it goes together. Use the one that fits. In our case, that's this one. So it goes in here, rubber side down to um, seal. And then there's a cap that goes on just like your normal radiator cap. Now you'll notice that's very loose. So it's not gonna seal, it's not gonna airlock. So what I went ahead and did, being the machinist that I am, I made these nice little spacers or washers. They go on over top, they slide on. Now that sticks up above the surface here. So when we put this cap on here, you have to push it down to get it to seal. And now that seals on there. So you put this funnel in here, fill everything up as far as you can before you start the car. Make sure there's still coolant in here. You start the car, it'll start to suck the coolant through the system and all the air bubbles will come up through the coolant that's in the top of the funnel. So when the bubbles stop, you take your plunger, stick that back in, seal that off, shut the car off, and then you can pull this funnel out. That should, in theory, not drip from here. So you should be able to put this back in your coolant jug, pull that, fill it back into the jug, you wipe this out, you put it away. It was 30 bucks at Harbor Freight. I figured it was worth a shot. Booker says they're great. So if it works in this video, Maybe go spend the 30 bucks if you have issues bleeding coolant systems. If you have an E36 or an E46 or just a BMW in general, the coolant systems can be a little bit finicky, so we're hoping this kind of solves most of our issues. You know, when you said till the bubble stop, I kept thinking about like pushing someone's head underwater Same. until the bubble stop. Same. Yeah. It'd be a real shame if someone caught that on camera. We don't have any puddles on the floor yet, so that's good. That is a good sign. It looks like a bad pee, not does, gonna lie. <laughs> it does look a bit dehydrated. Chugga lugga lugga lugga. So as of right now, we're still getting very few little bubbles out of this, but most of the air is out of the system. If I squeeze the hoses, we get a little bit of 
backfill, um, back pressure, that's good. Um, these are just all held together with little shrink fit tubings, as I showed on TikTok. The good thing here is we don't have any puddles on the floor. I have a couple little drops. They're inconsistent. I think it's just from that overflowing as the air came out. I'm gonna go back to the GoPro, but it's gonna be very loud when we start this. Um, it is also 7.45 on a Sunday evening, so my neighbors are really not gonna be happy about this. So we're gonna try to do this as quick as we can. Have to jump it with the Elantra. If you've been around the channel long enough, you know that we are no stranger to using the reliable daily drivers that I have. Well, the Subaru wasn't that reliable, reliable but it was a daily and we daily. relied on that as a support vehicle a lot we're gonna jump this start that and uh hopefully bleed the system pretty quickly We turned the e-fan on as soon as the temp gauge hit the middle. That was probably five, six minutes ago and it is still holding super consistent. We're still getting little bubbles here and there out of the overflow funnel deal. So we are going to allow that to continue to bubble. When we stop getting substantial bubbles out of that, we will cap it and call it a day. Our push to start panel still has one extra switch on it. I have a plan for it, but I'm not gonna discuss that in today's video. If you're a fan of Jimmy Oaks like I am, you probably already know what's going on here. Because it's coming from like up in this general area. Yeah, but I don't know what it is. Is it something with the headers? That's the longest it's run with these headers on it. Maybe it was, but it sounded like very constant, not like, like headers like- This is sucking now. Dump. So we're gonna have to do it again now. It sucked air. Yeah. Well, at least it's going somewhere. Well, now we know. Yeah. That was weird. It's just like, you're like, oh, it's sucking, and it's just like, yeah. whoosh. See, maybe that's what we have to do, is let it run for a while, and then shut it off, let it suck. Yeah, that's something with the headers now. That is, yeah, but that clicking. Yeah, I don't know what that clicking <laughs> was. Oh, here, I can hear it. Here comes some bubbles. I hear it too. So we've been running it and we're getting less and less bubbles. And as it expands, I put a marker mark on here just so I could see where it was at. Booker's been firing the car. And as it expands, this is getting warm. We'll let it run as it expands. When it starts to get up in here on the funnel, I tell Booker to shut it off. When he shuts it off, we get a little bit of bubbles and it slowly starts to drop back down. So we're just gonna continue to use this method until we no longer get bubbles. Now I'm sure to some of you watching, this isn't rocket science. This is something I've never done before. So all a learning process, it's really not that bad of a process considering the stock radiator setup has that stupid bleed screw and the expansion tank and everything. I don't like that. I don't like that style. That's why I went with the Chase Bays one with the filler neck. Somebody's probably gonna tell me I'm wrong. I'm doing this wrong. I don't care. I went for simplicity with a quality built product. I think Chase Bay has delivered on that. I had a couple issues with hoses and their customer service department telling me to order the wrong hoses for the setup that I wanted until I figured out I ordered the hoses they told me, but they told me the wrong hoses. They stopped selling the one hose that I needed. So that's why all of these other hoses are just generic black Chase Bays hoses. 
And then this one's HPS. I got it on like eBay or um, Amazon. I can't remember. It's just an inch and a half, 180 degree elbow. It works for what we need it. Um, these are all just little shrink fit, heat shrink tubing connectors. I just heat all of those on with the heat gun. Works pretty well so far. We are back down to about where the mark was. So I'm gonna have Booker start the car again and we're just gonna continue this process. Let's let this sit another minute or so and see how far it drops. I'm gonna fill it back to the line that I drew on there and then we'll just continue this process. It seems like it's working, so. This is our makeshift overflow. So we got to the point where we only had two bubbles come out the last time we had it running. I'm gonna take the plug, goes down in there like so, and then we're going to remove that off of here ever so gently. And I'm just gonna set it right in there. Let it drain back into the jug. This is still on here. We put this overflow in temporarily, but all we have to do is we'll pull this off. Pull our adapter with his nice spacers out. I don't know if you can see well on the camera, but the level's right there. Now I have the chase bays cap. Didn't need the chase bays cap, but it was just easier to order everything all at once. Cap is cap, usually. That's on there, that's sealed. So the game plan now is, now that we have all the air out of the system, going to start it and let it run again with the system sealed. Make sure that it holds temperature. Make sure that it doesn't start to leak now. I don't know why it would start to leak now, but when you put that cap on, gonna pull higher pressure on the system. I forget what it is. Cooling systems generally only pull somewhere between 12 and 20 PSI, so it's really not that high pressure. I could have just completely made those numbers up, but I know it's somewhere around 15-ish PSI. It would be leaking by now if it was going to. Stranger things have happened. Have it all sealed up. We're gonna start the car again and just make sure that everything's cool. Still holding super steady in the center where it should be. The electric fan is doing its job of making sure that it doesn't overheat, so that's cool. I'm excited, man. I'm this excited. Is, this is like the last big thing this car really needed. Anybody can weld a diff. We'll get to that, hopefully in this video. Psych alive. Still good? I say we let it run another five minutes. Really be a video if we don't end up in sheets. Hey look, there's a rapide, that's kind of sick. 